Hey, how's it going? Coach Ryan family here in the month of February. Uh, today I had to put what I'm talking about into practice. Um, I talked in video one, the very first video, about how a deadlift is a functional or useful exercise because it carries over to real life. Well, today, my wife was leaving the house. She had to go. She had an appointment. And my garage door just failed. Meh, just done. Threw up his hand, said, F it. I'm done. I'm not working anymore. It's February. I'm kicking back. Well, I had to manually open the garage door, which is basically deadlifting my 450 pound beast of a garage door, pushing it overhead so she can get out, holding it there while she drove out, and then trying not to let it crash down on top of me. So real world strength, real world application. Honestly, I was lifting it up, and I don't know a lot of people uh, in, in normal real life that would have been able to do it, to be honest. And they would have ended up being stuck in their house until a repair person could come or until I could get two or three more people. I want you to have the functional strength to be able to open your garage door if it fails. It's just one example, but it's a perfect uh, application of what happens in real life with the deadlift and why it's good to be strong. There's a current trend in the industry that strength isn't cool anymore. People call it ego lifting. And oh man, I hate that. It drives me nuts. There's always a place for strength. Being strong is never a weakness and don't ever forget it. Even when you're training for body composition, you may not be focusing primarily on strength, but strength is never a weakness. Okay, rant over. Now we're gonna talk about our deadwear topic for the day, which is the deadlift and central nervous system and how they relate. Your central nervous system consists of your brain, your spinal cord, and the motor neurons. Your nervous system controls every action in your body, including muscular contraction. Why is this important for the deadlift? Well, the deadlift is very taxing to the central nervous system. So if you deadlift hard today, there's a chance four days from now, you're not gonna be sore anymore, but your nervous system also hasn't recovered enough to put in a good deadlift workout to do another one, okay? So this has powerful implications on both the load we use as well as the frequency or how often we deadlift. So the nervous system already takes longer to recover than the muscular system. With the deadlift, it's even more pronounced. So you'll see top power lifters who are very, very strong sometimes deadlift only once every 15 days because it takes them that long for their brain and nervous system to be able to do that pattern effectively again. Um, so there's two points I'm gonna make here. One is about frequency and the other is about intensity. So with frequency, uh, this generally means that deadlift you can do less often than you can other body parts that uh, don't tax the nervous system as much. Biceps curls, you can do a hard biceps workout today and in three days, four days, heck, maybe even two days, be ready to do another hard biceps workout from a nervous system standpoint. Deadlifts, not quite. So just to give you an example, frequency also relates to the intensity of movement. So I'll give you an example of a recent deadlift cycle that I did. It was a 12-week block. Block one, was, each block was four weeks long. So block one, I did concentric pause deadlifts. Block two, I did snatch grip deadlifts. Block three, I did regular conventional deadlifts. Um, in block one with the concentric pauses, the weight was light, maybe 30 to 40% of my one rep max at the time. So I was able to do it more frequently. So I trained deadlift three days per week during that block. Okay, again, because the intensity was light, so I could tolerate the frequency because it, was not that, it wasn't that challenging for my nervous system. Block two, snatch grip deads. Um, I started to get heavy on those, so I cut it, my frequency down to once every seven days. So I would deadlift once every seven days. Block three, the conventional deadlift. Um, I should also mention in block three, I used a belt, so I was enabling myself to lift heavier weights. So because the weights were much heavier than in the previous blocks, then I cut the frequency back to once every 10 days and only pulled once every 10 days. So you can actually periodize the frequency of your deadlifting along with the intensity. Now we'll talk about intensity as it relates to maximal loads versus sub-maximal load. A maximal load, uh, a true maximal load would be like a one rep max, a one RM, something you would test in a powerlifting meet or in a, in a one RM test. But there's also such a thing as a repetition maximum or an RM. That would be like doing a set of six reps with a weight that you can only lift for six reps. You couldn't do any more weight and you couldn't do one more rep with that weight. In other words, your sixth rep was the, the last one you could possibly do. 
Okay, that would be a six RM. That's maximal repetition, maximal training. That is extremely taxing on your body. So anytime you work up to an RM lift, whether it be a one RM, an eight RM, 15 RM, you're gonna take, you're gonna need to take longer to recover your nervous system from that lift. Then we have sub-maximal training. Sub-maximal training would be like doing a set of eight reps with a weight that you probably could have lifted for 12 reps, maybe 15 reps. Um, sub-maximal training, I think, is the sweet spot for deadlift. I think most of your training should be sub-maximal. The reason is twofold. One, it's not as taxing on your central nervous system, so you can pull more often, okay? You get more practice at the deadlift. Um, two, when you're doing RM attempts, it's quite possible to be able to lift a weight all the way up and have really poor technique. So uh, I could probably lift 50 to 60 pounds more with a hunched over back, like terrible technique than I could with perfect technique. So if you're always doing RM lifts, you're always doing eight RMs, six RMs, etc. those last two reps of those sets are gonna be what we would say quite questionable, okay, in terms of your technique. You're risking injury and you're, you're practicing crap. You're doing a really poor job of practicing the lift. So the nervous system, the motor pattern gets screwed up and you end up basically being bad at the lift. So submaximal loads allow you to deadlift with better technique. They allow you to deadlift more frequently. Um, you can also do some variations with like speed deadlifts where you're trying to pull as fast as you can with a submaximal load for a low amount of reps. That helps increase rate of force development, force production, power output. So uh, I hope you learned something today in terms of the deadlift and how it relates to your nervous system. Hope you put these tips into practice in your own training. I'm Coach Ryan Family from the Viper Pit in the month of Deaduary. I'm going to see you again tomorrow. I hope you're not getting sick of me because I'm having a blast doing this month and I hope you are too. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please hit subscribe below and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>